So this is what a data scientist sees when they first log into Comet. As you can see, we support all of the popular machine learning libraries out of the box. That said, if you're using something that isn't listed here, even if it's homebrew, you can still use Comet. It will just require a bit of instrumentation. Um, after that, all you need to do in most cases is copy paste these two lines of code into your script, notebook, or pipeline. Comet is agnostic to where you train your model, whether it's your laptop, an EC2 instance, or a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna copy these two lines of code and jump over to a code example. So I have a simple example script here on the MNIST data set. MNIST is a data set of images of hand-drawn integers between zero and nine, and it's a classification task. And there's nothing special about this script and no comment specific code in this. We load in the MNIST data set. We do some simple data set pre-processing. We build a feed forward neural network uh, and we call model.fit. That's it, it's very simple. And all we need to do is copy paste the two liner we got from the UI into our script. Um, we're creating an experiment object and passing a few arguments to it. So an API key is per data scientist or comet user. Normally this would come from your configuration file, but I added it to the script for the sake of the demo. Project name is typically used for a single business or modeling task. In this case, I have a comment project that's called Perception. And Workspace is an abstraction if you have multiple teams within an organization. Um, I'll call this Workspace Development for the time being. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this script. And as soon as it runs, we should see a message that the experiment is live. So I'm going to take this URL and jump back to the Comet UI. So the, the first thing we can see are real-time training metrics, including accuracy, validation accuracy, validation loss, etc. cetera. Um, as you might have noticed, we didn't report any of these manually. Comet is integrated deeply with these ML libraries, and as such, we can pull most relevant information automatically. That said, if you have a custom metric, you can, of course, report that as well, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, this view is auto-generated, but if you'd like to add custom charts comparing multiple metrics, you can do that easily with the Add Chart button here. So we can make an empty view. We can add an accuracy chart like so. Um, and we can then save this view as well. So every time that you run a new experiment, Comet will generate the configuration of metrics that you care about seeing. Um, so I want to go over the rest of the tabs on the left here, but before I continue with the single experiment, are there any questions from what we've covered so far? Excellent. So, so the next tab is the code tab. It's obviously very important for data scientists to know which code produced which model. And Comet works with any Git system, including GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket, and actually bridges the difference between the software and the ML workflows. So what that means is, as a data scientist, you can move quickly and iterate without committing every small change. But when you're ready, the reproduce feature will give a clean git commit with only the relevant changes. So this means that you can roll your repository back in time to any experiment you have here. Um, moving on, the hyperparameters are captured. Again, these were all captured automatically, but you can report them manually as well. Metrics shows all model metrics, graph definition, Standard output, this is useful if your model happens to be throwing an exception. You don't need to SSH into a container to see what's going wrong. System metrics, where you're going to get GPU memory utilization visualizations as well as system OS info, um, dependencies, and a simple markdown editor where you and the team can start sharing notes and comments and building intuition around a modeling task. And if we keep going down these tabs below, we're getting into some of the advanced comment features that won't log automatically. So I'm gonna jump back to the code and run a more robust experiment to show you these, but let me pause it again to see if there are any questions. Excellent, so this experiment object did a lot of things automatically for us, but it also exposes a few straightforward methods. So we have a slightly more advanced script here. So let's say I have a custom metric I can call experiment log metric, custom metric 0 0.98, give it a name and a value, and it will be reported to Comet um, just as the auto-logged ones do. Additionally, if I have a dictionary of hyperparameters, I can attach that using experiment log parameters, um, like so. I can also log a hash of my data set using the log data set hash method. Um, in this script, I also include a few more of these calls in this finalized model function, which we can cover later. So let's run this script and see what we get.
So if I go down to the graphics tab, we see data set samples logged right to the UI. This is incredibly useful for debugging purposes, understanding your data, model predictions, and much more. This is pretty robust. If you want to group these by name, step, context, you're, you're able to customize this in many ways. Um, the next advanced feature that I want to highlight here is the confusion matrix tab. So with just a couple lines of code, Comet allows you to create interactive confusion matrices. Confusion matrices might be a familiar concept for you, but in Comet, not only can you view the matrix, you can actually see the samples where the model got things wrong. For example, in this cell, you know, we see the samples with ground truth label two that are misclassified as three. Um, and we can click on it and actually inspect them as you're seeing here. So this is very helpful to detect data issues and to drive the next steps in research. Um, we also log histograms of the distributions of model weights at various epochs over the course of your training. This can be used to visualize any kind of distribution. Um, and finally, the assets tab is where you can store all related artifacts, whether it's configuration, data samples, or more importantly, the trained model. Um, Comet stores the model with the experiment, and we'll show you how you can take it from here to production later in the demo. Um, so, so far I've only uh, shown you the single experiment. I want to move to the project level, but before I do, are there any questions? Great. So. So now we're on the project page and we can see our main experiment table, which, which shows a tabular view of all of the runs that myself or any of my collaborators have contributed to this modeling task. Um, if you're working on a team of six people, you can all submit your work to one central location uh, where you can compare across KPIs or important modeling metrics. The experiment table displays our results and parameters and provides an easy way to find the right experiment. But how do we translate this list of experiments to an understanding of our research progress? Um, for that, we have panels, which are project level visualizations of all of your experiments. Um, for example, in this chart, we can see the validation accuracy values for all of the experiments in our project. Um, this is where Comet really shines, actually, and I want to show you what that looks like. So let's, let's say you want to add a new panel. Um, so you can click this Add Panel button, and right away you have some standard built-in templates. You can build a line chart scatter chart, bar chart, etc. And these are broadly applicable to a wide range of modeling tasks. Um, but what we found from working with hundreds of data science teams over the last three years is that teams always wind up needing something new. Every modeling task is unique and different, and it's unlikely that a set of built-in charts will give you everything you need. Um, Comet is the only platform that allows you to build fully customized visualizations and panels. So if I click Create New, you're actually taken to a code-based panel builder where you can build your panels from scratch. This allows you to build any type of visualization or interaction you'd like. And the exciting part is it's using the Comet API to fetch experiment data and assets. Um, what's important to stress here as well, and what's different from other data visualization tools, is that these panels are dynamic. So if you build a panel, you build it once in Comet, and then anytime you or anyone on your team runs new experiments, um, the custom panel will automatically update to reflect the data from these new experiments. What's really cool as well is the community has been creating a ton of these as well um, and making them public. So if you're looking for something, you might be able to find it in the gallery already without building it from scratch. Um, as you can see, there are a ton of panels to choose from already, all built by our Comet user base and for use by the community. Um, for the sake of time, let's stick to something simple and just build a line chart from our data. So let's click Add Line Chart. Let's look at loss. Let's apply a little bit of smoothing and set x-axis uh, to epic. And we'll click Done. Now if I look here, my panel is immediately added to the UI. So now, as I mentioned, panels allow us to understand our experimentation in aggregate. For example, let's look at this parallel coordinates chart. Here, every axis in the chart is a hyperparameter. Every line in the chart is a single experiment. And the color of the line corresponds to the target metric, in this case, accuracy of the experiment. So in this case, orange lines are higher accuracy experiments, and purple lines are lower accuracy experiments. And just by eyeballing this, we can see that all the best experiments are in this lower value of decay rate, for the most part. Um, and in fact, what we can do here is we can actually select this subset 
and the rest of the project page will automatically update to display only the experiments that satisfy the constraint we've just set. Um, so this is reflected uh, in the table in the visible invisible column. Um, so now we have a few experiments with low decay step values and if we look at our accuracy we can see right away that these two best experiments uh, aren't performing exactly the same. They're a little bit different. Um, so let's take a closer look. So if we select these two experiments and scroll up and click this diff button, we can actually diff these experiments entirely. Metrics, hyperparameters, code, environment, and more. Um, and understand precisely what was different between these two runs. Um, so let's go back to the better of these two experiments. And now that we've identified our best experiment, we can actually move forward and register the model. So if you remember earlier, I showed you that the asset tab actually saves the trained model. So what I can do here is I can go into the assets tab and I have the trained model here, which contains H5, but it can also be model binary or pickle file, of course. And I can click register. Now my team has been working on this task for a while. So this is not a completely new model. We might even have something in production. So I'm going to pick this task, MNIST Neural Net, uh, and we can see we automatically get the latest version. Um, and let's update it here and then save this model to the model registry. Um, so what this looks like from the UI when I go back to the model registry is that I can see all of my models created by the team and we can see the latest one we created is in production. Um, so what I can do here is I can actually promote my new model to staging by demoting our current staging model. Um, now Comet doesn't handle the actual deployment or the inference side of things, but we do have APIs and webhooks that allow you to connect this to your CI CD system. So once I click update version, there's a webhook being called and my CI CD system will push this to my staging environment. Um, in the future, I can even demote this model and push the new one to production as well. So, so I know we've covered a lot in this demo and there's a ton of Comet features we have not yet covered, um, but I hope this has given you a good sense of the product. And at this point, I'm happy to take the conversation in any direction you'd like.